Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and later later in the show, we're going to have Steve Ray be my co-adventure guide. Uh, you know, there's a friend of mine, Jason Jones, who coined the phrase, or at least told me the phrase, Holy Spirit Action Plan. And that's what we're going to talk about with Steve and Ray when we get back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife and I, when we get up in the morning, when she finally gets up in the morning, and we go have a cup of coffee, we do our morning uh, prayer time, uh, we always ask, I always pray that her wildest dreams would come true. You know, that God would plant new and right desires in her heart and that they would come true. And then we always say, Lord, order our day. And a friend of mine, Jason Jones, I mean, he doesn't have any friends. I'm probably the only friend he has. Actually, wherever I go, people always come up and say, hey, Jason Jones said to, hi, said to say hi. So he knows more people than anyone I know. But he calls it the Holy Spirit Action Plan. When you start your day and you just go, you just go with what God's doing. When we were uh, filming the Long Ride Home TV show. Uh, you know, there's three seasons of it on the EWTN network, and it's on Prime Video, and you can watch it on our. You can go to our our Bear, DeepAdventure.com site, and and you can get all of them there too. Uh, but uh, we, w I would wake up about five in the morning, four thirty in the morning, while the other guys were still sleeping in from the last four hundred mile motorcycle ride from the day before, and I'd be thinking, okay, what is the Lord up to? I mean, before we started filming, I would pray, Lord, what are you up to with this particular? Uh, season and I'd have a sense maybe it was about uh, one of the virtues or one of, one it was particularly about uh, uh, being thankful for our law enforcement and our military and uh, and then and then I would watch the Holy Spirit just engineer things like we would get pulled over by a cop one time and then, <laughs> and then we got and then we but then we met like someone arbitrarily called me like text me in the morning when I was up at like 5 or 6 a.m. Hey, my husband loves to watch your show, and we see you're in Asheville, North Carolina. He's a captain with the Asheville Police Department, and he'd love to meet you. And I said, well, why don't you, get, why don't you have him come down for Mass? Well, I didn't know he was a motorcycle cop, and he rolled down with eight of his men. And I just call that Holy Spirit Action Plan. And that's what we want to do in our lives. We, we start our day in prayer, and then, and then the Lord will give you little hints about what the day's going to be, and you order your day accordingly. And then you go out and rock it, but you're always paying attention. Lord, is this something like it's so easy to be busy and brush brush someone off and not not be attentive to people that you run into through the day, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, this could be the Holy Spirit. So be attentive today for the Holy Spirit action plan. And we've got Steve Ray with us today. He is Holy Spirit action plan to the max. Just got back from uh, his hundred and. 81st trip probably to Israel, right? Steve, how many trips to Israel? Well, before COVID hit, we were 180, and I've been back twice now, so I think you're pretty close. I have lost count, though, to be honest with you. It could be more than that, but I've, I've lost count. <laughs> so you're going back again in a few days, aren't you? Yeah, where we, are you going? We, we, took, we took a group there in April. We had a sold-out group, and we had another group we took in um, April and May. We just got back from that a week ago. This Sunday, we're leaving for Germany to take a group of 60-some people to Oberammergau for their passion play wow, in Oberammergau. Wow, never done that. And while we're there, we're going to visit Dachau and all around Munich and then the Catholic sites and beautiful churches. And we're going to go through Switzerland, visit Zurich and some of the great Catholic churches there, and then drive through the Alps and come down into Milan, Italy. And we're going to the great Duomo. One of the things I like about that Duomo is that in the basement nobody even knows it's down there is the baptismal font where saint ambrose baptized saint Ag oh, augustine but that must that's not a little baby font that's a big old that's big a old huge one that's a huge <laughs> yeah. one bill yeah and but I, I love it because you think of those two guys the impact oh. those doctors of the church had oh. on history not just of the church but of the world and anyway then we leave there we go down to lanciano we have mass at the miracle the Eucharistic Miracle of Lanciano. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Montepello, have Mass at the face cloth of Christ, the one that was on his face in the tomb. And then we spend three days in Rome. And then oh. we come back and we go to Israel again. Oh, that's all. <laughs> hey, so you guys, if you've never been on a Catholic pilgrimage, you should go on with Steve Ray. I mean, it's not, it, 
Okay. It's like going to war. It's an expedition. It's not a tourist. It's not a vacation. <laughs> it's not a vacation, is it? It's like no, it's not. get up it, early and did, hit the road. and. Geez. We do start early. And, and people, I have one guy that says, my wife would come if you'd start at 9 o'clock. But since you start at 7, she won't come with you. You're me. already on but, the third <laughs> site by then, you know. I know. What? But we have a, a theory of start early, end early. Give people time to digest everything process what they've seen swim in the sea of galilee that kind of thing in the afternoon and um but we we do have very nice hotels we have wine with all of you our do. dinners we, you do oh yeah we have really the first nice time i met you was uh i was on a i was in israel you happened to be there too and it was what's the name of that that hotel in jerusalem notre uh, the, dame the, notre dame yeah that's hard to remember yeah but i mean you know it it is it's it, it's just it's just amazing but just yeah. in the little things you talked about so far, we could have like a whole show about them. But I want to ask yeah. you first, you know, when, you know, Jesus did something special when he sent his disciples out before, you know, before he was, uh, before his resurrection, he anointed them and told them to go out and share the good news and to cast out demons too. And it, it, it is something special. It went, they went out two by two. There's really something special that happens when you go out. Like when I go speak, I always, exp I mean, I'm, I'm wanting to go there and be a blessing, but I always know there's going to be something really cool is going to happen. There's something about going out. And when you go on a pilgrimage with Steve Ray and his wife, um, you know, you can expect the unexpected. What, were, what, what are some of the Holy Spirit moments just on your last trip that you can point to where you knew the Lord was moving in someone's heart or moving to evangelize or just when he logistically made a miracle happen or tell there's, us about there's always that. a lot of those things i i just spoke with a nun not a while ago a sister and she said i decided to be a sister when i was on your pilgrimage wow um i had one guy this wasn't this last trip but he told me he says uh, i'm a reluctant pilgrim he said i don't really want to be here he said but my wife went fishing with me for two weeks last year so this is the payback i had to come with her as a trade-off so in other words good thinking go wife good thinking you. wife <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i said that's okay because um, the land is going to reach out and grab you you aren't going to expect it and i said that's fine We're, i'm just glad you're here the third day in we had mass at capernaum where, oh. And it was at the synagogue where Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Oh. And we had our mass there. And when he came out, he had tears running down his eyes. And he said, Steve, he said, I'm not a reluctant pilgrim anymore. He said, I just realized where I am. Yeah. And he was just enthusiastic. Now, on this last trip, we had two priests going with us. And they tested positive for COVID the day before they were going to go with us. So they had to drop out. And so I said, oh, brother, now what are we going to do? Why you know, did you call you me? Here? because <laughs> you don't wear a collar <laughs> oh yeah okay so we found a, we found a good priest in uh, in uh, Jerusalem a good friend of mine actually he's a legionary we and I've, I've uh, used the same software he does called Verbum and he's a trainer mm. and so we got to know each other he also got me mass in um, in um, March he got us mass at St. Peter's tomb in Rome with our group so he's mm. a good friend but anyway he caught COVID in the fourth day into the trip you know, it was the only one. Nobody else, just the priest that was going to come and the priest that was there. So he dropped out. But we had a good deacon. And and I just mm. got an email from the deacon. And he said, Steve, he said, I can't believe how the Holy Spirit worked on that trip. He said, I was there. And there's nothing I would have rather done than lead the Via Della Rosa and lead the mm. rosary every day and serve at Mass. Because we had to get, like, visiting priests. And, I, and he was kind of like the solid guy. And he said, I just was so blessed. He said, my wife and I were just, we're still blessed bubbling over with that whole experience and so he said i was at i was supposed to be on that pilgrimage for that reason it was really holy, um, holy spirit action yeah, plan yeah i remember the via, via de la rosa what time of the day do you do you do that that walk to the to the <laughs> what time of the day i bet I it's wait. four in the morning it is. We wake up at 4. We start at 4.30 or 5. Depends on what time we have Mass there. If we have Mass at the Holy Sepulcher early, then we start at 4. If we have it at Calvary or at the tomb a little bit like at 7, then we start maybe at 5. But we start the Via Dolorosa when there's nobody there. We get to the to the Holy Sepulcher. We get everybody up in line. We can touch the top of Calvary when no crowds are there to bother us. And I say, when you reach down and touch that, if you did that 2,000 years ago, your hand would come up sticky with his blood. That's what oh, you're touching, folks. Yeah. And then we go down and have a tour of the church when there's nobody there. 
and mm. my guidance. And the, uh, the, the church, the church of the Holy Sepulchre, or yep. In other words, the, the Holy this, Sepulchre. So let's slow down for a minute. You, 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 so, so you know. By the way, at that hour of the day, do you ever hear the roosters crow? At four in the oh, morning, yeah. and isn't, I, well, you know isn't that just knock you over when you hear? Yep. You think of Peter, when right? Down the, yeah. When we're walking down the Via della Rosa, I hear the rooster crow, and I said, "I hope nobody just denied the Lord." And they all laugh. <laughs> no, but it's 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 a shocking sound because you hear it yeah. in the before yeah. the dawn even starts. You know, you hear yeah. that rooster crowing. It's called the the, ro- the rooster crow. That's what the Romans called that part of the night. It was called the rooster crow. Oh, interesting. Is did you get that on your Verbum app or what? Yeah, and I, I, that's in my book, too, by the way, my book on John. Which, oh, yes, yes. But but the, we're going to take a break here. We're talking with Steve Ray. This man is very uh, special to me. My father sent me his book, Crossing the Tiber, and it was instrumental in my returning to the Catholic Church. He talks about the early church fathers. And Steve can see behind me all the all the books yep. on the early church fathers. This and is I the, know those sets. Yeah, you know those. You live those. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak. I would like to invite you to go to to uh, Steve's site. What is it? Catholic Convert. CatholicConvert dot com. And your son got that for you, right? Long time ago. It's Long been up there. time you ago. Know, Bear Pentecost was last Sunday. That was our twenty eighth anniversary as a family. We came in on Pentecost twenty eight years ago. Praise my God. My son. Yeah, and my son had that website set up probably six within six months of a, me becoming a convert and it's been up right right a, right after he he set up the coca-cola.com uh <laughs> website he he said he he went to GoDaddy first and got that one hey we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak right. adventure this is dan of the boom markham with another episode of country up buckaroo what brand do folks put on you no doubt some good and some bad Lots of terms for cowboys, cow hand, cow poke, cow puncher, ranch hand, herder, brush popper, never heard that one, did you, and buckaroo. Was a time in Arizona when cowpokes resisted being called cowboys due to the outlaw gang known as the cowboys, who notoriously tussled with Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. From dime novels, the popularity of rodeos, and Hollywood producing Western movies, the term cowboy rose to the top and stuck. I do admit having a personal liking for buckaroo. It has a certain feel when you pronounce it, with a sort of wholesome tune when you get to the roo and buckaroo. Herders were multi-ethnic. Most trail drivers were veterans of the Civil War, Confederate, and Union, with somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% being freed slaves. Others were European immigrants, Mexicans, and American Indians. Christianity is indeed multi-ethnic. Bible types called by a number of names, some good and some not so good. Essentially, Christian means little anointed ones or followers of Christ. We've been called hypocrites, fundies, Bible bashers, hateful, and so on. Sometimes deserved, sometimes not. Not to worry. The key is following and imitating Christ in word and deed. Jesus said we would be known by the fruit we bear. Hopefully our fruit looks wholesome to others because, well, it it is wholesome. Keep in mind, though, our fruit will be ultimately judged by Christ alone, not others nor our culture. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We are so thrilled. My friend Pat Gervais, IT guy, 
uh, and I, about a year ago, we built this beautiful site. He built it. I kind of imagined it, I guess. But it's called Bear School of Manliness. And you can go to deepadventure.com or Bear School of Manliness. It takes you to the same place, and you can become part of our man cave. And then you begin to go with us through a three-year curriculum on manliness. Each month, we're all together on the same rule or the same virtue. Uh, so if you start in the middle of the year, you're still with us, and we, we go through it one, one virtue a month or one area a month. And there's video, there's audio, there's written um, documents, there's short snippets, there's homilies, all on the same subject. For example, this, this month that we're actually talking about the virtue of love. Uh, and so it's so cool because the men uh, study those and go through that that uh, on their own. And then we also, once a month, we have all the members of the cave get together and we have a Zoom meeting in the first half of the month. And second half of a month, you get together in a Zoom meeting with, with just your small group uh, and uh, go through it. But what's happening is the men are saying, this is awesome. I can take my sons, like you got to kind of discern 10 years, 11, 12, 13 years old. We give them their own username and access. They don't get to be part of the man cave because that's for adults, but they have their own access to the curriculum. And you can actually track them as they click their way through the curriculum, what they've observed and what they've completed. And, um, and some of the men are like once or twice a week sitting down and going through that month's curriculum with their sons. So it's a great way to bring up real manly conversations. We're talking with at deepadventure.com. We're talking with, with Steve Ray, uh, who um, I think we just have this this kindred uh, adventurist sort of uh, a spirit, and uh, he's led so many pilgrimages all over the world, but in, in specifically to the Holy Lands. And we're talking about how when you're sent to all all in your every day, it's, it's true. But there's a special way when you go out, like when the Lord says, "Go do this mission," like okay, go teach catechism, or go become a member of the board of directors of this uh, of the school board, or or go and go and uh, go to Haiti and help. There's just something that happens when you go. You get out of your comfort zone, I think, and then God that's shows right. up. God yep. shows up. Yep. That's what a pilgrimage is. Can I share a story? No, no, about, no. This is a, about this going is, out. Okay. And you said it about Holy Spirit moments and going out. I think this this works. Um, a long time ago. I decided to wear this cross with me everywhere. And it's not because I like jewelry bear, because I'm not a jewelry kind of guy, okay? But I wear this cross. It's What's those flashy Damiano. those flashy rings then? Those diamonds is, you're uh, wearing? Uh, that, that, that gold is, grill I mean, you got yeah, in the front of your teeth. This is a, a <laughs> ring of the uh, that I'm a knight of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. That's wow. what that is, a Jerusalem cross. Wow. And it's, it's because I'm a member of the, the equestrian order, the Holy Sepulchre, all the way back from the Crusades. And this one I'm most proud of. That's the, the wedding ring. That I've got this beautiful woman who loves me. So that's my jewelry, that, that, and this. That's it. But I wear this because it starts comments. And then we started yes. to think about evangelization. That's why I wear my, I wear my, my Hawaiian fish hook. People say, why yeah. are you wearing that? That's not like something official Catholic. And I go, well, I'm a fisher of men. And then it starts a conversation. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It does. And this starts conversation. So what I, I started to think about is every day I'm going to go out, I'm hoping somebody will make a comment about this, and they do. But even if not, I'm going to do something to start a conversation. And I made up my mind I was going to do three a day. And this is going out. All right. It's, it's out of your comfort zone. Now, so the way my wife says it, Steve, is when we go out, we should put up our antennas beep, 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 and exactly. say, Lord, who is it that you want me to talk to today? And yes. so you, you say, when I go out, even if it's just to say, God bless you to someone, because nobody says that anymore. Everybody's afraid to say that. They'll say, have a good day or something, but they or don't get, say God Or get bless out of you. my way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I've, I've started to say, God bless you. And Christmas, I always say Merry Christmas. Me and too. I emphasize yeah. the Christmas. Yeah. And, it's, and it starts a conversation. But also, my wife, like one time at the grocery store, there was an elderly lady, had her arms full of groceries, and she couldn't open the door. So my wife ran and opened the door for her. And she said, oh, thank you, young lady, for opening the door. My wife said, oh, you're welcome. We're Catholics, and we love to help people. And you know, you don't have to be a convert to do that. And you can do that multiple times a day. So I, if you ask my wife, when I'm in the airport, I'm doing this all the time. I'm always fi figuring out a way to bring the Lord and the church into the conversation. And they may not want to. You could see their eyes close or then you drop it. But there's other people who say, wow, that's fascinating. And then they want to talk more. So what my wife said is we should have our antennas up. Going, who, who am I supposed to talk that's to That's exactly today? right. 
And I did this at a conference. I told people, you should make up your mind to start small, one person a day. Say, Lord, bring one person a day into my life. Maybe it's someone that's way far away, and you're going to be like on a chessboard, moving that person to me, to finally on yes. a chessboard. Today we're going to meet, see? Yes. And if I fail to do it, God's going to say, oh, no, I spent a month getting them. Now i got to start all over again. I know. I've had but the same it, thought, the exact same thought. <laughs> so if but this one lady, she... She called me uh, uh, like two months after I told I mentioned this in a talk on evangelism, and she said, "Steve, you have no idea how you've radical changed my life." She said, "I have never had so much fun in my life. I wake up now and say, Lord, bring me three people today that I can talk to about you." She said, "So when I walk out the door, I'm looking at everybody and saying, is that the one? Is that the one?'" And she said, "It makes my life so exciting." And she said, "Every single day I've had three people to talk to." Now, this is what you talked about going out, Holy Spirit moments. And if you do that, it makes your life so exciting because you just never know what's going to happen that day or whose life you're going to affect, how you're going to be the, the voice or the breath of the Holy Spirit in someone's life. Yeah, and we miss so many opportunities. I think about this, Steve. You know, my wife, Cindy, came here many years ago and stayed at the, the Marriott right next to my house here in Waikiki at about the same height as my condo. And we didn't meet until many many years later on the beach in florida where i was surfing i was like oh, our angels are like okay now get her over here okay now better you do this okay now here we are okay, <laughs> you're walking by abc store you're gonna bump into it oh you missed you know <laughs> but, but, but it is like that through yeah. the day too like yeah. just yesterday um we were down at the moana one of our the, the oldest hotel in, in 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 waikiki in oahu probably in the islands and um listening to beautiful hawaiian music and then i noticed this 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 father daughter sitting close to where we were and I just went up and briefly said hi to them and it just opened up a door of, of blessing. I didn't, didn't even bring up yeah. the Lord, but just yeah. I was able to give them some thoughts. And then as I walked away, there was this beautiful little girl, uh, one and a half years old, kind of dancing to the music and just to bend down and give her a beautiful smile. It doesn't have to be even, an overt even, nope. Nope. but just to sh let her know, those people know that they're yep. cherished. Almost every week I see a family with three, four, five, six kids. And they're, they're a nice family. And I always go up and say to them, you have a beautiful family. Yes. And then they'll say, well, thank you very much. I said, by any chance, are you Christians? And they'll, they almost always say, yes, we are. And I said, good for you. God bless you. Keep up the good work. Raise those wonderful kids for the Lord. And, you, and, you know, one time I was in a restaurant with my father-in-law. And there was a big family over there. Very nice. And the kids are all talking. They didn't have iPhones. They were talking to each other. And I said to my father-in-law, I said, that's a Christian homeschooling family right over there. He said, well, how would you ever, how could you know that? He says, I said, I'll bet you, I'll be right back. I got up and walked across the restaurant and I said, can you guys help me win a bet? They said, sure, what? I said, are you Christians? They said, yes, we are. Are you homeschoolers? They said, yes, we are. I said, God bless you, good for you. I just won 10 bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you can spot yeah. families like that. You know, you, My you son know. has eight kids, and they're such beautiful kids. They get complimented all the time because the kids are so nice to themselves, among themselves, but also they reach out to everybody else. And you know what You know what? I, what, what, we, what I do is <clears throat> when I see that, that father holding the baby, the father and the wife together, especially when I see the fathers, I will comment on their child, and yep. I'll just say, yep. and, I, and I will say, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I, and because so he's many never men, heard that before. No, so many men have he's, never heard anybody say, "I'm proud and maybe of you." Even from his own father, his right? Father, you know, men, men are just dying to have their own father say, "I love you. I'm proud of you." I tell my kids that every day. You will ask them, they'll say, "Dad's always telling us he's proud of us. He's always and, telling and, us he loves us." But we can do but that. So for, many men. So many men have issues in their life because they have daddy issues. The father does never say that to their kids. And so for, for us to say, what a beautiful family, and it's very courageous what you're doing, and I'm so proud of you. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. To make you that and I are a lot alike. Yeah, it, but it makes <laughs> it, and it, and it may open up a conversation. Or maybe, normally what it does, it, le it leaves them speechless. Yep. There's a beautiful yep. look on their face, but they're just like, did that just happen? And thank you. Yep. We're talking with Steve Ray. Actually, Steve, hold on a second. We're talking with Steve Ray. When Steve and I talk, we talk at about 100 miles a minute and gust to about 200. But uh, Steve Ray, where can they find you so they can join you on one of your pilgrimages? CatholicConvert.com. And I put up things on the blog every day, too. And that's on, um, that's on your website? Yep, and do you use, and do you use the Veriboom app when you're preparing your blogs? 
Oh, I use the, I've been using that app since 1990. Are you showing off I again? Live on it. He's showing off you know again. What I, He's show, well, we got to go. We'll be right back with, with okay, Steve Ray. Okay. We'll be right back. Aloha. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. I can remember uh, in my home in Molokai, the island that my mom and dad lived at. He would, my dad was a deacon in Molokai, the home of, of course, St. Damien and St. Marianne. And from my condo on the west side, when the surf would get big, I could hear the waves breaking on the rocks. And I could hear boulders smashed against each other and the loud banging noise that they would make. But I would be asleep. But in the middle of the night, I would hear these things and I would dream about big waves and a certain adrenaline would start to fill me of fear and excitement. And then I'd wake up at two in the morning and I'd realize way out in the deep, rolling like thunder, there is a wave that was gonna arrive five or six hours later and that I would paddle out and that wave and I would have an appointment and I would turn and I'd paddle in and carve across the face of that wave. Way, way, way out in the deep right now, there's a wave that's rolling like thunder coming for you and coming for me. This wave, I believe, is the new springtime that John Paul II spoke about. The wave of renewal, the wave of revival, the wave of the new spring. We've seen 200 million people martyred in the name of atheism in the last century. That's according to the University of Hawaii. The church has always believed that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And I believe that all of the suffering of the 20th century, somehow in some way, maybe not in a huge way, maybe in a very deep way, there will be significant deep conversion. There is a wave rolling like thunder, the largest wave you've ever seen, rolling and rolling out of the distance, and it's gonna be here at the break of day paddle out, be ready to meet it, and drop into the power of the Holy Spirit and move in the new evangelization. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine Oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Steve Ray. Steve's impressing us with the fact he knows how to use software. The variable map, though, is cool. I mean, like, remember when the old concordances? Do you remember co what a concordance oh, is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those big volumes. Them, Strong's exhaustive concordance. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because, I, yes, I had I had those. And, um, and it's interesting because now they're no longer on my shelf. You know, because I use the I use use apps. But explain to us what Verbum is. I think it'd be good for people to love to study. Well, scripture. Verbum is a fantastic program. It's Catholic, and it, there's nothing like it on the planet. And I've been using it for a long time. And I jokingly say, Bear, that once I became a Catholic, I never opened a Bible again. And they all laugh. Oh, just like all the other Catholics. I said, Yeah, but I do it now on my computer and on my iPhone. I have 35 to 50 translations of the Bible, and I can have them scrolling side by side and compare them. But Verbum is just a fantastic uh, program. It, you can learn about it. Go to verbum.com forward has, slash It has Steve the catechism Ray. on it too, doesn't it? Oh, wait, oh. wait. Say that again. Verbum.com forward slash Steve Ray. Forward slash Steve Ray. Okay, good. And if good. they use the promo code. Uh, that helps you. Steve, Steve Ray 8. 
I get 10% commission, they get a 10% discount. So I, because I help them develop this program. And what is it, what is it again? Years. Give it one more time. Um, Verbum.com forward slash Steve Ray. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, um, uh, there's one uh, translation I bet you don't have. Since you're such a wise, wise scholar, it's a Wycliffe translation of the New Testament in Hawaiian pigeon. That I don't hear. Uh-huh. I have the Wycliffe translation. I'm more of a, a, I am more of a scholar. You want to hear what John 3.16 <laughs> is? Yes, I'd love to. If this is in Hawaiian? A Hawaiian pigeon. So not Hawaiian, Hawaiian pigeon. Okay. Like, hey, bro, what's up, bro? You know, the kind, like that. <laughs> so uh, John 3.16, For God so aloha the world that he gave his one and only boy, that whoever believe in him would have life to the max. I like it. I love <laughs> well, it. But when I read it, it does. When you read different translations, it kind of is a way for you to get. Because sometimes you read the same translation so much, it kind of becomes a blur. But when you switch translations, it's like, oh, it makes you stop yeah. and get a different perspective it on it. We're yeah. talking with Steve it Ray does. from CatholicConvert.com. And we're talking about Holy Spirit action plan moments. You know, uh, Jeff Cavins. And I, we were, I don't know where we were. We were somewhere in, in Michigan going up to the Upper Peninsula. And my bikers met Knights on Bikes bikers. And Jeff Cavins and his group of eight or nine or ten bikers that always ride together. I'd just ridden 800 miles. And we met up. We're sitting out having cigars around a little fireplace by this, this uh, hotel. And he was talking about how the day before they had been in Iowa. Now we're in Michigan. That's a long ride. And they, were, they, and they were in a bar, and there was girls obviously having a um, bachelorette party. And he went up to her, and he said these words. He said, do you see all these? And he wasn't going up to hit on her, you know, like they, they, they might expect. He went up and said, you see all these men here? This represents 300 years of fidelity to our, and love for our wives. And you wow. have the same. Yeah, I mean, that was just like, what a witness. What an unusual thing to do. Yeah, yeah but just, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're being attentive to the Holy Spirit, you get to see God do stuff. If you step, you know, here's the thing. If you step out in faith and you're right one out of three times, you are a Hall of Fame baseball player. You know, if you, if you get a hit one out of three times at bat and it takes practice. That's a good point. You know, so if you go up yeah. and, and, and then sometimes it's not just that you approach them, but then the Holy Spirit whispers something to you, gives you an insight into their life just right where they needed to be spoken to. And if you're right one out of 10 times, that's wonderful. But if you're right one out of three times, you're in the Hall of Fame. So you, you, don't, don't, don't miss, it. don't worry about it. If, you, if sometimes it doesn't, you're, you know, it, it's just a hello. But sometimes the door opens really wide. People, yep. people are, people are I got hungry. one more story if you got a minute. Only one I, more? I at, yeah, I, well, I got lots, but okay. this one I really like. I was at the airport and this young man, he's probably 30. So I, I used to think that was old. Now I think 30 is young. And this young, <laughs> yeah, 30, 35, came up to me and he saw my cross and he pointed to it and he says, oh, that's beautiful. And I said, oh, well, thank you. And I held it up. I said, I wear it proudly as a Catholic. He wasn't expecting that answer. And I, and he said, oh, so you believe it? And I said, yeah, I said, I believe it enough to die for it, actually. And he goes, well, <laughs> when he didn't want to talk anymore, he walked away. He ended up sitting next to me on the airplane. Oh, <laughs> you talk about a, a, a divine appointment. That's what my wife divine appointment. Yeah, divine appointments were, and he, he looked at me and I knew he was he didn't want to talk. You know, he was like, "Oh, brother." So he puts his headphones on. I was listening to a podcast, but ten minutes into the flight, I get a tap on my shoulder, and he says, "Do you have a minute?" And I said, "Yes." He says, "You really believe that, don't you?" And I said, "Yes, I do." He said, I don't believe in anything. I'm an atheist, and I'd love to believe in something like that. Can you explain to me and tell me why I should be a Christian? And I had the guy for two hours on that plane, and we mm. talked all the way. Wow. Just because I wore this, and I was willing to say something. Another and you, were, and you weren't intrusive. No, you no, just, no. It's like, it's like being, you know, like where I wear my fish hook. Here's a little yeah. bait. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and you hope somebody will take it. That's someone, yeah. There's a family behind me at the airport. All of my stories are from the airport. Right. I, I, I fly 200,000 miles a year. But anyway, so this family's behind me in line, my wife and I. And I don't like I don't like lines. I like being in the front. It's one of my flaws. And so, but they're having, their kids were being rowdy, and I could see they're just struggling. So I stepped aside, and I says, ma'am, would you like to get up here in the front and, and take care of this you know, I said, I can wait. You, you want to? Oh, she said, oh, thank you so much. And it just came to me like the Holy Spirit just at that moment. I held up my cross. I said, 
if I don't practice it, I shouldn't wear it. Wow. And she said, and she said thank you so much. God bless you. Yes. Just a simple thing, but well, he, who knows what that'll and do. And here's another, here's another thing. It's like two things I want to bring up. One is when you're in a, in a line and I'm like, I need to get ahead of these other people. And I realize, <laughs> wait a minute, God loves those people as much as he loves me. What right do I have <laughs> to push to the front? But the other thing is there's another sort of divine appointment. And that's when someone offends you. When someone wrongs you, you know, like maybe yeah. is rude to you. Um, yep. That's an appointment right there. That's a trigger point for you to, yep. you know, love does not take offense, right? They may be offending, <laughs> trying to offend you, but the the response to someone who's being offensive towards you. Yep, I got another airplane. <laughs> we, just this was like, this was just a week ago. We were flying home, yeah. and my wife and I, because our flight was uh, was canceled, we had to get on another one, and we were separated in the seats. And so I, I never we liked asked that. both times. Oh, I don't need it. And we thought, you know, somebody will let us, but both people said no. We want this seat. You can't have the seat. And I said, okay, okay, that's fine. So we sat down. But another guy in another area came, and he said, I'll take that for you so that you can sit with your wife. And so I said, thank you very much. So when I got out, before I got off the plane, I gave that guy a $25 gift card for BP gas stations. I said, thank you. He said, no, no. I said, but I want to. This is a gift card for you for being so kind. And then I said to the other people, I said, thank you all. You've been wonderful flight mates today. I said, it was a pleasure being on the plane with all of you. And that was to the people that wouldn't let us have their seats yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they all then all they smiled and they didn't know how to react to that. Yeah. And I said before I got off, I said, and God bless you all. Yeah, and you meant it. You weren't I being did. sarcastic. Yeah. No, no, I wasn't, and they knew I meant it. Yeah. But you, this is what you're talking about. Every day, look for opportunities to when someone's not kind to you to be kind back. My mom used to say it's from the Book of Proverbs: pouring coals of fire on their head. You know, by being kind to them. And I know also it can go a little bit even further. I remember once being in an airport and uh, waiting to get in line. And, and the Lord just felt, I felt the Lord nudge me to say to the woman next to me, I know you're very, re very, very worried about your son. And you can and pray to the Lord. The Lord is going to bless him. And she just looked at me like, and I would look at her like, I can't believe I just said that. I should have said that, you know. And but but it, she said, "How did you know?" And of course, I, you know. And so that's kind of part of the batting practice too. When you feel a nudge yeah. like that, then also do that. And the other thing is, I yeah. will tell you, and I think you know this is true. There are times when you're walking through a public place and you smell demons. You know, you can sense there's a demonic presence bothering someone or in a particular situation. And as I'm in Waikiki, it's a very unusual place. You know, a lot of people come in and going. I will bind, I'll, I, will, I will rebuke the spirits. And if I sense an, an, an evil presence, I'll say, Lord, I bind, I bind that, that demon in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray God's blessing over people. And as you're walking and you see someone in pain, I mean, anytime you see, some, see someone with a limp, they, it hurts. It's not just that they're limping, it hurts. I pray, Lord, yeah. please, re please, please bless them. Please relieve their pain today. You know, yeah. and so to pray blessings on people as you go by. And as when you pray a blessing for someone, then the Lord will give you a word, perhaps, or an insight, or just to pray for them. We're talking yeah. with Steve Ray from CatholicConvert.com. Um, we got to take a break, Steve. Uh, hold that thought, okay? Don't forget. Okay. Okay, we're talking with Steve Ray. <laughs> you guys, you guys have got to watch this uh, the, the the YouTube version of this. You can go to Bear Wozniak uh, Deep Adventure YouTube and subscribe. You got to see Steve Ray. He's beside himself. Just hold your breath. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you to share the journey with each other, and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. 
Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, you guys, our TV show, Long Ride Home, is up on Prime Video, so we invite you to go there and, and watch it. And you can watch all the episodes of Long Ride Home if you join the Mama Bears or the Bears School of Manliness at DeepAdventure.com. Part of your joining is you get access to all of the episodes, the YouTube version, so you can play them, have friend, your friends watch it, even the episodes before they air on EWTN. And i got to remind you, uh, Sophie has come out with two of my books in the last six months. Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue is available on Amazon, and so is, um, what is the name of that other book? A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, which is just a metaphor for our spiritual journey using uh, using surfing uh, as, a, as that metaphor. we got Steve Ray with us. Okay, Steve, what were you holding your breath about? What did you want to say before the break? Well, you're talking about praying for people and blessing them, you know, I was like, been like that too at times. And my son picked up on it and he does that now. He's 40 years old. And guess what? Now his 18 year olds, my 18 year old grandson was telling me about how a good number of times recently he's w walked up to someone and said, do you mind if I pray with you? I can uh, see you've got a problem. Can I pray? And he's 18 years old and he's a yeah. handsome young guy. He's a concert pianist. And so this, when you do this in a family, it, it can kind of roll downhill to the next generation and the next generation. And um, I, I'll tell you another experience that I had. It was one of those where you just feel like the Lord wants you to do something and you and resist it even and say, no, no, because maybe the, this person will be embarrassed that I do it or something. But we went to Mass and this nice young black lady came in. She was probably only 20 years old, but she had a little one or two year old boy with her. And I know she didn't have a husband with her. She came in by herself with this little boy. And she was obviously got up early in the morning and got herself pretty. She looked very nice. And he was very nice with a little bow tie on. Oh. And I just said, that is that is very impressive that she, and, and most of the people there are white. You know, it's it's mostly white. And she kind of stood out. So after mass, I, I had a $50 bill in my hand and I walked up to her and I said, you have a very nice young boy there. I said, you should be very proud of him. He was such a nice boy during Mass. I said, here's a little gift. I want you to go out and do something for your son this afternoon. And then I walked out. And my wife and I walked out to our car. She came chasing us across the parking lot, dragging that little kid behind her. She said, how did you know? And I said, what? I, I don't know what you mean. She said, how did you know that I needed $50 to pay my rent this week? Mm. And I said, I got tears in my eyes. Mm. Had I not listened to the Lord at that moment, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't even tell my wife I was going to do it. I just did it. I just went over and said hello to her and, and just gave it to her very humbly. I mean, it wasn't like I was trying to embarrass her. I just said, uh, I just would, that boy is so nice. Do something for him this afternoon special. Mm. And it paid her rent. My my wow. son is the same. He, he's got eight kids. They went to a church when they moved. Nobody said anything to them at the church. Nobody paid any attention to them. They didn't, they were like, they didn't exist. So they did. They tried another Catholic church the next Sunday, and it had families in it, and people were coming up and greeting them. And the old guy sitting in front of my son turns around and hands him twenty dollars. He says, "After mass, go get those kids an ice cream." Guess uh, where my church? Guess no, where my son's cool. going to church now? Yeah, exactly. Hey, I got to <laughs> tell you about my dad, who loves yeah. you very. Who, who sent me your book, and he's he passed away about a year and a half ago. But he was a Catholic deacon. And he was a very powerful professional speaker. His, he was assistant superintendent of schools, a, a great uh, champ, state champion basketball coach, and uh, and then became a professional speaker, and then in time became a Catholic deacon. So you think about this powerful, charismatic man. In his older age, he became just so sweet. And he would sit in the back of the church, and I would send him holy cards, hundreds of holy cards. And he would sit in – this is a message to our, our – our listeners that are maybe a little bit older and they wonder, well, what can I, what can I do now for the Lord? And he would sit in the back and the kids, because he couldn't stand it, the kids were over to the side and the little children would always come and greet him and he would give each of them a holy card and he would say, you're so special. There's no one else like you in the world and God don't make no wow. joke and you're so beautiful. God's really going to bless you and use you. And he would give them holy cards. So you, wow. those, those um, older members, like <laughs> we're getting to be those older members out there of the church, and even and anyone, just think about how how special that moment is to just to give out a holy card. Remember when people used to give out holy cards? Hey, hey, Steve, you know, you know, I have a, I have a line of cigars called the Seven Virtues Cigars. They're my man cave cigars. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, pe pe <laughs> and they're it. really great cigars, but they're um, and they, it, when you when you go to smoke them, you have to take off 
the rapper, right? And that rapper is a quote from one of my book on one of the seven virtues. But uh, the man who does those, uh, his name is Peter Bond. He's in Louisiana, who makes these cigars. He's so great at it. He, you know, they're hand rolled. They're beautiful, beautiful premium cigars. He prints thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not more, holy cards every year. That's his ministry. Wow. So we, nice. do, we should start doing that. Great. Order, go to, I forget his site, but just look up Peter Bond or something and go to a site and buy holy cards and, and hand those out to the little children. I remember the nuns you know, used to I, give those to me. I do that too. When, when I pay a bill or something I send out in an envelope, I always put a holy card in there or something like a prayer card or the local Catholic radio station website. And I put that in there with my check or I leave it when I go to a restaurant and I leave the tip, I put one of those in there Wow. Too. See, that's that's it. That's the Holy Spirit action plan. Yep. Yep. Do, we do things like that. One guy told me, he said, I, my parish isn't very friendly. He said, I'm almost thinking of quitting the Catholic Church because nobody's friendly any more there. I said, ooh, I said, I got a job for you. I want you to get to Mass 20 minutes early every Sunday, and I want you to stand out in front and greet people as they come in and tell them what a friendly parish this is. <laughs> I said, wait awesome. till you see the, the change in your own life. Wow. Yeah, so that's it. You know, we can we can we can um, wait for things to happen. But what happens is there's 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 the planting and there's the reaping. I'm very fortunate because I get to reap a lot. You know, bringing people that moment of decision. But that's because someone's been planting in their lives in prayer, and in words and in example. And then there comes that moment, like you got to be with that young man on the airplane. But yeah. d but be patient when you you, you plant. You give out a holy card, or you say something, say something to someone, and then and then yep. wait, wait. You just don't know. When you plant a seed, it takes some rain, it takes some sunshine, and it takes a whole lot of time. Before well, you that you can be the you up. can be the sunshine, Steve. Yeah, and, I, <laughs> and we could and we'll do the praying. We'll be the rain. <laughs> there's a lot of glow here. <laughs> you guys who don't know, you guys who know Steve, you know he always wears. I call it like an adventurer's hat. It uh, is. But when he takes it off, he just does look like the same man. He glows more. Let's put it that way. Yeah. On the top. <laughs> My wife said I'm really, really handsome like you this. You do she look good it. that way. But she said she really loves me. Oh. She just cut my hair this morning, so it was a little longer, there, but it's short so, now. So there was hair. Yeah. I, and I, when I was a kid. When I was uh, 20, by the way, my hair was like a lion's mane down on my shoulder. I was mm -hmm. like a hippie kid. Back. It was, but when in my 20s. The water started not going down in the shower, and I'd look, it was all my hair, <laughs> hair down. There. It's so it didn't hard. It take to, long, boy. You know what? God's just keeping you humble, you know? And I did all this stuff to try and keep my hair. You know, stand on your head, put this ointment on, and my wife says, Steve, I think you're really sexy and handsome like that. She said, don't worry about it. So I never thought about it again. Oh, that's cool, as long as, long as your wife is happy. So uh, we're talking with Steve Ray. Yeah. His book, Crossing the Tiber, uh, brought me roaring back to the church. My dad gave it to me, my dad being a Catholic deacon. And it's so, such a privilege to get to, talk, to, to be with you. If people want to go on one of your pilgrimages, um, how can they find out? CatholicConvert.com. Right up at the top, I have a big banner. It says, Join Steve on a pilgrimage. It has a different picture every time you turn it on. One is in a boat. One is that touching the top of Calvary, you know. But, but Sarah and I have a blog where I put things on the blog. I, I'm having a conference, by the way, in July. We have a pilgrimage going through the shrines of Wisconsin, and Cardinal Burke oh. is going to celebrate oh, the Mass for wow. us. Oh, wow. And then attached to that is going to be, I have a conference called Love Being Catholic, and it's going to be three day, two and a half days at a wonderful hotel in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Oh. And guess who's going to come and speak? Father Don Calloway is going to come and speak. Oh, and I've, Father heard, Chris I've heard Ayler. of him. I've heard of him, Don and Calloway. Father Chris Aylar. Those, those two Chris, guys are going to come. I'm going to talk. And, we, and there's a new comedian named Jeremy McClellan, a Catholic oh, comedian. He's, put me in touch with him. I want to interview him. Yeah, he's going to be there also to do a comedy uh, show for make, us. Make so him, this make, is in July. Will you put him in touch with me? I want to interview him. Sure, I will. Yeah. So all of that also is on my website, and uh, you don't have to get jet lag going over to Israel. You can do that pilgrimage right in Wisconsin Well, well tell, tell, tell Father Don that Bear says hi. Because right, our, our pilgrimage to Israel, we went with Father Don. And, you know, we got there two days early before the rest of the group on Christmas Day. And, He's uh, really a great guy, and, isn't he? And we were in Tel Aviv, and we saw surf. And so Cindy and I went out, went, went, went across the street, 
and we rented. We said, "Can we have the biggest surfboard that you have?" And they go, "You go why?" And I show them a picture of us tandem surfing. And this is where I lift her when we surf. And you go, "Oh, you can use my board." And so we went out in the lineup. And Cindy tells a story so cute because there's there's 20 people out there. The swells up. It's very rare to have such a nice swell in Israel. And they came over finally. See two people on the board. They go, "So, so uh, you guys ever surfed before?" And I go, "No, first time." And then this wave comes, <laughs> and we drop in on the wave, and I do this. I, you know, she does this beautiful overhead arching lift, and they were they were like instant friends. And then as we were leaving, I was walking up the sidewalk, and this guy, uh, his name is Gali, uh, stood there blocking my path. And he goes, "You bear Wozniak? And I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Come here." So he took me to his surf shop, and he showed me pictures of his his great friend um, uh, Doc Paschkowitz. He calls him Paschkowitz. I always called him Paschkowitz, who brought surfing to Israel. And he's a great friend of mine too. So he knew we, I, he knew me because of Doc, and so we had this great camaraderie. So tell 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 uh, Father Don that Bear Wozniak had the best summer waves of his life, and uh, just try to make him feel miserable. You know that he hasn't yeah, been yeah. surfing in Hawaii. He's a neat guy, isn't he? He's a great priest. I I, I call he him is. and uh, Father him and Father Chris Ayler and I said, would you come speak at my conference? And they both said, of course we'll come, Steve. We'd love to. So that's in, uh, in yeah, you July. You guys notice he didn't invite me. Hey. Steve, well, we got to go. You're way on the other side of the world. I know it's not fun to. T- it's not, it's when I go to the mainland, it's like you go into Israel. It's it's an expedition. Okay, so we're, we, this is Steve Ray, CatholicConvert.com. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We got to roll. Till next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you, aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.